Hello, my crafty tribe. This is Artsy Maddie, and let's get creative. So today I'm starting off with these six uh, plastic wine glasses just in the party section from Dollar Tree. And I'm using my wood burning tool with the knife on the end. Um, you can change out the end. So I just put the little cutting tool in there and it worked perfectly, nice and easy. And then we're gonna be using these boot laces. These are also from Dollar Tree. And I picked the larger size, the 72 inch, and it used both of them uh, to wrap this little uh, bee skep. So I had this idea just to make another little miniature bee skep. And I really wanted to share it with you guys. So I don't know that it goes with this vignette, but I just wanted to share it with you in case you're making a bee tiered tray. And I thought this would be handy for you. So just going around, it did take a fair bit of um, hot glue, just to be sure. I just wanted it to be secure. So I just took my time and glued it all to the little um, cup part here. So I just joined them up. I cut most of the plastic end off. So it's just like a little nib there, you can see, and then just butted them up against each other. And we'll cover up that later, I'll show you. So just at the top here, I just glued it to itself. And then you'll see here, that's the end of the two, the pair, the 72 inch pair. So I did use a little bit of the 54 inch one as well, but just one pack would be plenty to do this craft. And then I just, I don't know why I just like to put a little handle on my bee skep. I don't know if that's a thing on the real ones, but I just think it looks cute. So I just added a little handle on top. And then to do the twine, like the, how you see the other direction holding it all together, um, I just took one strand of the three ply twine. This is the thinner twine from Dollar Tree. So I just unraveled the three and just used the one strand, dipped it in the Aline's tacky glue, and then just ran it up on a diagonal um, just to give it that authentic bee skep look. And the glue dries clear, so I don't have to worry about that too much. And then I just, when I'm done this whole project, then I just give it a coat of satin or matte finish um, spray sealer. And that kind of dulls down any of the sheen of the glue. So that helps a lot. So just in case you missed this on my previous video, um, these are the little jewel bees <laughs> that I'm so excited about. So you can make over a hundred bees with this one little sheet of jewel stickers from Dollar Tree. And these are also available at Walmart. I saw them for sale in the craft section at Walmart too. They cost a little bit more, but still for a hundred bees, you can't beat that. Um, they're very forgiving, so easy to paint. If you mess up a little bit, don't worry about it. It's basically going to flake off when you pull them up off the off of the um, plastic backing. So very forgiving, very easy to paint. And then they just come off in a strip, and then you just cut each bee separately, and they're very sticky. They stick on really well, so you don't even have to hot glue them on or anything like that. And then I forgot I needed to paint a little opening on this skip. So we'll go back in and paint an opening. This is just with some black chalk paint. So just a tiny little opening for the bees. I think I forgot to <laughs> fast forward that part. Sorry about that. So just lots of little cute little bees all around the skep, all around the opening. And here is the final product. So like I said, I just gave it a spray with some matte sealer. next pro project is super simple, super easy. So I just found these little, um, they're just a little bit smaller than a regular paper bag. I'd say a little bit shorter and a little bit narrower, so not quite as wide. And maybe a little bit sturdier, 
but not too much. They're still pretty thin. So I have this beautiful sunflower stamp and I had put in, put two um, little soft paperbacks inside just to make it flat, like a flat surface to work on. So just stuffed it with those books while I was working on it. These are just some watercolor paints, just giving it some color. So I'll try and show you just some options I could think of to make this creative. <laughs> And then just using a wet wipe to kind of blend in so it's not as solid with the watercolors. And this is a soft chalk pastel. I just thought to kind of give it that old look, kind of give it some um, dirtiness, like a worn kind of finish to it. So just in all the little crevices and it'll kind of pick up all the little um, creases and details. And then just gently, I want to fold over the top twice. So just really gently take your time, just work it slowly so it doesn't um, rip the paper. And voila, just a super simple little easy planter box. So um, just to give it a little bit more stability, I just cut a piece of cardboard for the inside and hot glued it in. And then I just put in some of these pretty, um, I believe these ones are from Dollarama and then these larger sunflowers are from Dollar Tree but they go well together, kind of a medium and a small size. And that's it, easy peasy. So here's one that I just left plain, which I think I prefer. You guys will have to let me know which one you like better. And then I'll show you the painted one with the watercolor. I thought it would look cute too, kind of crumpled. You guys have to let me know what else you would do to it. So today is Sunday Fun Day, and I love this challenge. It's one of my favorites. It's hosted by Deco Easy. If you know my channel, you know I just love them. They're one of my favorite creators on YouTube. Uh, Danny and her daughter-in-law, Diane, and they craft together. They're both super creative. I'll have a link to their, um, to their channel in my description box. Their co-host is The Crafting Cousins. If you don't know them, Kay and Trish, they are awesome. You will love them. They're so talented. They bring so much experience and knowledge to the game, and I just can't get enough of them. So moving on here, um, this little jar is from Dollar Tree, and it reminded me of a little honey pot. And I think it reminded others too, because I feel like I've seen a few of these in the last week or so, so I think we all kind of had the same thought. <laughs> so hopefully I'm on to the right path here. Hopefully you guys will think this is a cute little honey pot too. I actually saw um, these Disney store uh, honey pots that look just like this on Poshmark, um, but they're discontinued. Like I think they were sold a long time ago, so those are like a secondhand item, but they were really quite expensive. So I just wanted to recreate them. Um, I'm just thinking I should have added a picture. Sorry, I'll post that maybe on my Instagram with a picture of the ones that I saw on Poshmark. I'll just post a picture of them side by side. You guys can tell me how you think this dupe went over. So I'm just using chalk paint. So white chalk paint mixed with a little bit of black chalk paint. And then I want to show you so after I started this little small one, I went to Dollar Tree and they had the larger round like glass, but it didn't have a lid and I wanted it to have a lid. So I bought the one in the middle with the lid and then just created a little knob on top. So I'm using the inside of a scotch tape roll that's empty, like that was all used up and then gluing it into a marinade um, cap, like a little kind of metal cap. I'm sure you guys know what this is. <laughs> and just creating something like that with lids just as a little knob on the top. So then just painting it again. So I just mixed uh, white chalk paint with a little bit of black to get a light gray and then added more black in to make the darker gray. And that's all these colors are. And I just put them on quite thick. I really wanted that like pottery glazed look and then I coat them with some gloss Mod Podge at the end too to give them a sheen. And so they had this really cute honey, just like the Winnie the Pooh um, 
with the N backwards. I just thought it was so cute. So I just tried to emulate that. It's kind of easy just block printing with the backwards N. And then I went over them. I tried with just the regular Sharpie, but um, when that paint is still a little bit tacky, the, the paint pens are a little bit more forgiving to that. So I just used an oil base Sharpie paint pen to do the writing and it worked great. So now for the honey, I had um, tried to get some honey look in, in the craft that I actually did before this, but you're going to see it later in the video with just clear glue and it gave the look of honey, but not the color of honey. So I kind of researched a little bit what yellow hot glue I could get and at Home Depot, DeWalt um, sells like an industrial kind of wood glue that has a little bit of yellow to it. Like it's a really pale yellow, but I thought, well, that'll be better, better than clear. So it is like, if you just want to leave it like this, I think this has the look of honey too, but I just wanted it to be a little bit richer, like a little bit deeper color. So I'll show you what we do. Yeah, this is the DeWalt pack. So they just sell them in little packs. Um, not much over $5, I, I want to say. So it was a little bit of a splurge, but I thought it was worth it. I only used two sticks anyway to do this. So be a little bit more careful with me if you recreate this. So the inside of this filled up with a little bit too much of the hot glue. I actually had to cut some away. So just try and be a little bit more mindful that not so much is going in. So to make this honey a little bit richer color, I'm using some uh, food coloring in a copper color and a deeper yellow color. I can't remember the name of it. I will try and post that in my description tomorrow. So I'm um, just mixing it in with the gloss Mod Podge and then the food coloring to hopefully keep this transparent. Um, when I do that later craft, you'll see that I just painted it and I tried to get that transparent with paint and Mod Podge, but it just wasn't transparent at all. So I can see this is a little bit light. So I added a little bit more of that copper color in. I knew I wasn't going to be using that again. That's why I stuck the paintbrush in it. So not to worry, I won't be using that one. It's all dried out. So it can just be a craft food color now. So to avoid um, brush strokes, I'm just using a sponge and dabbing it. It did kind of create like a bubbly texture a little bit, but I thought it was better than brush strokes. It looks a little bit more honey like maybe like bubbles in the honey. So I was a little bit happier with this. I still don't think it's perfect, but, but definitely better than just the paint on glue. So it's a step up. Let me know if you guys can think of a better way to create honey or what you guys would do. I'm always up for ideas. So then I wanted to create some little cartoon bees. So I had this idea before. I thought it would be like maybe too much work because you can just buy these little cartoon bees off Amazon. I just always find things cost more in Canada on Amazon. So I'm just trying to save some money here. So these little ladybug stickers are just from Dollar Tree. I coated them with white because whenever you paint yellow or red or metallic, it's usually best to start with a good white base coat to get that true color. So this is the sunny yellow color and it comes out great because of that white um, underneath makes it nice and bright and even and then I just went in with a sharpie and just did the um, black head on the bee and then two little stripes on each one so I just took my time and it wasn't too bad I think this just took about 15 minutes to do this little sheet here it is best the longer you can let that paint dry um, when you're putting the Sharpie to paint that isn't um, cured yet, like it's dry, but it's not cured, it'll still kind of have a tackiness to it and it can dry out your Sharpie. So 
if you can, it is best to just leave it um, for quite a few hours or overnight if you can, if you're patient enough to hold off. <laughs> Otherwise, it did still work. Um, I tried it with the oil-based uh, paint pen as well. That just gave it a little bit of sheen though. You can see the ones in the middle have a bit of sheen, so the flat Sharpie was better. So then for the wings, I am using uh, interfacing. So I sew as well. So this interfacing is for sewing. If you do any sewing, you'll have this probably, or if you know somebody that does sewing, they'll have a little bit, or you can just go buy just a tiny little bit. Um, I just thought it kind of had the look of wings. It's transparent and white. If not, maybe get creative with like some vellum or you could water down some white paint and just put it on some plastic and just cut out little heart shapes and then in half makes the little two wings. And this went fairly quickly too. So I thought this would be maybe too uh, finicky, but it actually went really quickly. I don't think this took much longer than 20 minutes, 25 minutes to, to get them all done and turn them into bees. <laughs> So I thought they turned out super cute. Nice little kind of cartoon, little happy bees. And then the fun part, we get to add them to the little honey pots. So any paint that um, comes off on the edges of the bees, you can just kind of scrape it with your fingernail and it comes off really easy and these are quite sticky so they stuck really well nothing's come off yet so if you're worried about that though maybe just a little bit of e6000 or something to make sure oh and i had coated these with gloss mod podge as well and just to give them that sheen that like pottery look and here's the final product with the little winnie the pooh <laughs> Who doesn't love Winnie the Pooh with his oh bother and think, think, think. So next project, I learned this from uh, Julie's Designs and Signs. I'm just loving her channel. I've learned so much from her. So it's a little bit of a, a copycat, but shout out to her. I love her channel, learned so much. I'll have a link to it in my description box. If you haven't checked her out, I would definitely recommend it. She'll probably become one of your favorites too. So I printed out um, the front of this book called the Beekeeper's Bible. I just thought it was really pretty little design on it and just um, used a glue stick, tacked it all down to the top, trimmed it to size. And then I printed out, um, this came up when I just typed in like B art or B word art, I believe. Just in a Google search, I found this little, cute little Save the Bees logo. So I just printed it out um, as best as I could to fit the front of these books and just lined up the edge. Now, just be a little bit more mindful than me not to let the Mod Podge go down over the front where you've already glued paper. Um, I actually had to redo the top after this, so just be a little bit more mindful than me because that Mod Podge sticks really well. And then I just cut through to separate so they actually look like books again. And this is just a piece of straw hat. So you'll see that in an upcoming craft here too in a second. So it's just a yellow um, kid's straw hat from the Dollar Tree. Actually, I don't even know if you can call it um, straw. I guess it's like I don't even know, <laughs> plastic probably. So these are just, um, that medium sunflower is from the Dollar Tree. The small one is from Dollarama. Just thought they look cute together. And that's it. Oh, and we're gonna do the words. Sorry, I almost forgot. So I just wanted to um, have the words, let the dandelions grow on here. 
Um, just knowing how important those are, the first flowers for the bees and how much they depend on them. So just wanted to put that little message on there. So just stamping it. Um, I had gotten these letter stamps at the Dollar Tree. I just hadn't used them yet, but they're great. Nice and easy to work with. I can't remember how long ago I got them. I don't think it was too long ago. I can't remember if they're still selling them or not. If you see them though, pick them up. They're pretty good. So I knew this would be a little imperfect. It's fine. Um, I got, I printed out the word dandelions just um, with a font from defont.com, just kind of a script font that I liked and sized it. I think I just put in wallet size for the printing option just so that it would be small enough and then just mod podging it down. So when you do the mod podge over the ink, be very careful because it does um, spread a little bit. So just watch that with the stamping. And this is just a little bird from the Dollar Tree as well. I think I just touched up his beak and his eye, his eyes. And now moving on to the final product. So this is um, a font called Syllabilla from defont.com. And I'll try and, I'm gonna try and have a link to this in my description box. So hopefully that's gonna work out tomorrow when I post this, that you guys will just be able to click on if you want this honey word, like if you're wanting to recreate this. So I just went around cause I knew I wanted to have a piece of this black foam core for the letters to sit on. So it doesn't have to be exact. I just kind of wanted like a bubbly shape around it um, to glue the letters to. So you'll just see me cutting it here. You don't have to worry too much. Just get your blade sharp with the um, sharpening stone. If you don't know that tip, it's great for your blades. You can just um, sharpen them to keep using them and you'll get a much longer <laughs> use out of your blade. So you can see they're not exact, but it's okay. It's just like a little backdrop sort of thing. And then I'm just using like a cereal box or something, just some kind of thin flexible cardboard that I can work with. And I just have some carbon paper underneath that. So just tracing it down. And then this cardboard is flexible enough that I could just cut it with scissors mostly and just the little hard parts. I just used the exacto knife again. And then I'm just kind of putting it into this little tray. This was my idea. So I wanted it to be honey with the heart for honey love. Um, just showing you some other options I had kind of thought about was putting it onto one of these wood planks from Walmart or these wooden um, words that are from Dollar Tree, just as some other options or other ideas. So I'm gonna be painting this yellow. So like I said earlier, just to get a nice bright true yellow it's good to start with a white base coat and it makes the work a lot easier so just giving it a nice base coat of white and then on to this little wooden heart I believe this was from Dollar Tree as well too I want to say it was around Christmas or Valentine's I just gave it a whitewash just with some watered down chalk paint and then here we are with that sunny yellow again just sponging it on so I don't have too many brush strokes and two coats and it was perfect. So that white base coat makes a really big difference with yellow, with red, um, with metallics. And then I just thought I would add a little bit of detail to this heart as well. So just sponging some yellow around the edges. And then this is foam wire. So I used this in a previous video as well. 
They also sell these at Dollarama in these little strips. So I did some research for you guys. Um, down in the States, it's not sold by Schmidt, but they do sell foam wire at Menards, which I believe is a hardware store. Like I'm thinking it's kind of like Home Depot down there. So they sell some foam green wire just like this, and it's called Rapiclip. So R-A-P-I-C-L-I-P. -I -I so I think this is a great thing to have on hand for crafting. So uh, in my previous video, I made a little bee skep and a little honeycomb, like a honey hive, like a Winnie the Pooh honey hive with some of the coiled green wire. So definitely, I think I'll be using it around Christmas time too. I have some ideas for it. So if you see this or you're around a Menards or a Dollarama, I would definitely pick some up. So I just mitered the corners. Um, I'll put a little bit of glue to squeeze those together after, but just tried to frame it in just like a wooden frame, but with the foam. So it just kind of gives that um, edge some thickness makes it look a little bit more substantial so this is a uh, paper ribbon I want to say this is from Dollar Tree but I can't be sure it didn't say crafters square on it and I can't remember getting it at Dollarama things at Dollarama usually have a price on it so I can't be certain which one it's from but definitely from one of the dollar stores so I just started wrapping this paper ribbon all around just to give it some texture and I knew I kind of wanted it like with that black um, underneath. So this paper ribbon worked out pretty good. So just gluing it down, wrapping it around. And then I wanted the tray to be black. I thought I had black spray paint. It turned out I didn't. <laughs> I didn't want to do a trip out just for that. So I just sponged on some black paint, but definitely um, black spray paint would have worked a lot better. So this is that yellow um, kids hat from Dollar Tree and you just kind of have to pull that first little bit apart like just break up the sewing on it and then it just easily like super easily just peels away um, each little strand of the ribbon I don't really know what to call this <laughs> I don't really know what the material is but I like it it's pretty I like the color of it so then I just I uh, took my time and I kind of pre-wrapped it loosely and then just pulling it tighter as I go and gluing it down. That seemed to work out pretty well, pretty easy. So you can see the texture and the detail of it. So then on this yellow honey word, I just um, drew out a honeycomb pattern um, so you can kind of look at like a, a drawing of it online just to kind of emulate or copy if you had a stencil or something that would be amazing or a stamp if you had a honeycomb stamp but I didn't have any of that so I'm just taking a few minutes and drawing this out and then because I'm crazy with the detail orientation <laughs> I thought it looked a little bit better with this gold sheen pen so that's just from the Dollar Tree as well I believe and just gluing it down to that black foam core underneath. And there's the honey word. And then we're going to add some more details to it. So um, I have my um, glue gun on low because I didn't want to melt all the foam inside the foam core. So I just have it on low temperature. And then I'm just letting it drip and ooze down the top, um, just like as if it was covered in honey. So just going for lots of drips and that gooey texture. So it just took a few times going across it to just kind of build that up and just being patient, let it drip. And then I wanted the paint to be transparent when I painted this. So I used Mod Podge. Oh, we're gonna do the heart first, sorry. So I'm just going to Mod Podge down this little printable. I just looked up watercolor B in Google Images and that's what I've been doing. I found some super cute little prints and when you're not doing them big or you don't need them high quality for prints or anything, that works out pretty well. Nice and easy. 
So here we go. Painting the mod are the honey. So I wanted it to be transparent, which is why I used the gloss mod pod with a bit of paint. But it didn't end up being that transparent and you know we we're getting a lot of brush strokes. So I added in a bit of gold to kind of deepen the color and maybe make it a little bit more glisteny. It's not a total fail, I just don't love it. I don't quite have honey perfected. <laughs> so if you guys have better ideas or um, if you've seen any better ideas, definitely share them with me, please. I would love that. <laughs> And then just after this was dry, just um, sanding all the edges. So you just sand in kind of a downward motion and it'll come off really easily once that Mod Podge, Mod, Mod Podge has all dried. It gives you a great finish on the edges. So then I just have these bell flowers. These are from Dollar Tree. I just thought they were cute and the right color. So I'm just going to try and arrange them with the sign and the heart. Um, I ended up tacking them to the back of the honey sign and the back of the heart. Just with some, some masking tape. And then I have a paint stick behind the frame. Excuse me. And then the honey sign, um, just lots of glue and gluing it down to that wooden stick through the, the, the metal frame, the tray. So same thing with the heart, just that little wooden piece underneath, lots of glue, and gluing it down. And that held pretty well. So then I just wanted some more greenery, so I pulled some of this greenery. It kind of looks like, um, like a little bit of a boxwood or something. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but I just wanted a little bit more greenery in there, so that worked out well. You just use what you have though. Use whatever flowers make you happy. <laughs> and then I'm going to use the rest of those little cute little cartoon bees. So just gluing them on, putting them wherever they look cute. They are quite sticky. I was quite impressed. They're good little stickers. So I wanted a couple on the outside, so I just had to plug in my hot glue gun and get that hot to glue some onto the frame of it. So you guys will have to let me know. Um, I'm hoping to do two more B videos. I've just been enjoying this so much. So you guys will have to let me know if you're interested in more bee decor. If you've kind of done your bee decor, like if you're finished or or just keep it coming, let me know. <laughs> let me know what you guys are wanting to see. And I'll be doing some more camping stuff as well. And that is it. That's our final product today, project. So I just want to thank you guys so much, everyone that subscribed. I just, I cannot get over <laughs> how fast this is uh, growing and it just feels great. Um, so just thank you to all who subscribed. And if you haven't, I hope you'll consider subscribing and just have lots more bee stuff coming up and camping videos. And I'm doing my first collab coming up in June. So it'll be summer Dollar Tree crafts. So I can't wait to share that with you guys. Hope you're all well and keeping safe and looking forward to summer. <laughs> so make sure you check out the playlist. There's going to be a, an entire Sunday fun day playlist. And this is my favorite challenge, our favorite um, challenge. Yeah, that's what they call it. So a challenge playlist, just full of lots of surprises and neat ideas. So I just switched it out from that um, plain stamp on the paper bag now to this is the one with the watercolor on it. You guys will have to let me know which one of those you prefer to or what you'll be recreating. So thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.